classrooms they are this flat slab right this concrete slab there are very many variations in this you will study in higher semesters two way slab one way slab flat slab flat plate so many things you will study these are all variations of this next one so this is example of a slab right beam and slab system next one now the same 2d element we can work as a what as a wall element so far we have been seeing like a membrane right a uh, flexible membrane rigid membrane we haven't had seen we'll see in a moment then we saw it as a flat slab right carrying this load now difference between a wall and the slab is slab is load is perpendicular to the surface in a wall the load is predominantly here but it can also occur here when does it occur here in a building when you should answer he is answering <laughs> when does a wall have vertical loads and also horizontal load when wind occurs when there is a wind load or when there is a earthquake load you also have horizontal okay yeah so let us look at that example so this is a wall which is subject to predominantly vertical load and when there is a high wind hurricane it has horizontal load or when there is earthquake next one now 2d stiff elements the other was membrane which is not stiff now we have a cylindrical shell so when you make the 2d element like this bend it like this and apply a load right it becomes a cylinder when does it become a cylinder we saw a arch just hold it here we saw a arch so when you have a arch and a linear line which is called a directrix when the arch travels over a directrix what is generated a cylinder is generated then the cylinder can have a ellipse as its shape it can have a circle as its shape it can have a parabola as its shape any all these things are possible you can have a parabolic cylinder cylindrical circular cylinder elliptical cylinder or any other shape that you wish any mathematical or even non mathematical shape you can have so that's how it works the theory of this is very complicated when you are studying mathematics you will wonder why you are studying differential equation partial differential equation the equation which governs this is a eighth order partial differential uh, equation right is a eighth order partial differential equation which uh, which will uh, which you have to use to get the membrane and the bending stresses for these elements so that way you link up your mathematical knowledge with what happens here right next one so this is another uh short, short it's called a short shell because right this this is very short this is the direction next one spherical shell now a spherical shell is very fascinating because from a plane element you cannot develop a sphere without cutting and stretching you have to cut and stretch to convert this into a sphere and because of the same reason the spherical shape becomes very strong and that's the reason why three eggs can support the heaviest person in this class right it can support the heaviest person because it's a it's a, a curved doubly curved shell the egg yeah next one so this is a beautiful example of a shell structure shell structure with glazing on the sides here we saw in our first slide glazing and concrete double development two developments next one now this is a very unusual structure where these two points are held and you lift up these two points these two points will lifted up it gives a very unusual surface called a hyperbolic paraboloid next one this is a hyperbolic paraboloid and the practical example of this is a saddle which you use over a horse horse saddle in one direction the curvature will be in this upward direction the curvature is here in one direction x and in the y direction the curvature is like this and this is called hyperbolic paraboloid in short hyper hyperbolic paraboloid is the equation which controls this whereas 
the actual curve both are parabolas this is a parabola downward this is upward parabola and the amazing thing is all these lines are straight so the form work if you want to make the structure the form work can be made from just straight planks first plank will be like this second like this third like this third like that third like that finally it will create that shape so that's why civil engineers and felix candle are very fond of this next one so this is an example of that right next one then i come to the last category which is the solid element so we saw a line element a plate element and a solid element let's see the solid element the all the dimensions are same like the cell right you call it a solid element right what are the examples of application of solid element next one a pyramid right so even the pyramid was constructed 5000 years ago today we can analyze the pyramid by uh, discretizing or cutting it down to solid elements in our computer and find out what are the stresses which are occurring or you can go for a modern application another example what is this this is a engine block you can model this on the computer as a solid element and find out what are the stresses which occurs on it during various stages of its working so to summarize this talk can you go back to the first first one to summarize uh, today's lecture yeah first one first uh, not this one the lecture powerpoint yeah so to summarize today's lecture it is structure in architecture journey through the ages so we have mentally and in our thought traveled over how many years 5000 years and we have started with the pyramid come to a modern smart structure which combines structure architecture and smart materials and technology and computers and we saw that modern structures we can only create the deconstructivism by frank gary by using computers in a big way right and all these structures we can break them down into simple elements combining mostly a linear element a plate element right and a solid element right so thank you very much and all this lecture will be up on your ecado thank you